What's up everybody, I am Crimson Thunder here. Welcome back to this Let's Play of Sentinels of the Multiverse, the video game. Last time we ended up facing, we have ended up facing the last of the villains here, uh, Kaga Warfang. Before we get into the team mode, we also noticed that just like with some of the other stuff that we have with the villain, uh, heroes having variants, other ever these villains actually have their own va variants. The first, and we're going to be doing all of these before we get into the villains uh, of the multiverse. The first one we're going to go is Baron Blade. Why Baron Blade? Because I thought you already f fought him. Yeah, but we haven't done this one yet. This is the Mad Bomber Blade, and this actually makes fighting Baron Blade much, much harder. Well, here, you don't have to worry about the impulsion beam pulling the moon into the earth. This one's just going to fly it out, just start bombing the crap out of everything that's out there. So, here we're going to be going on... He, he's, since he's going to do a lot of fire damage, Ra's a very good idea to bring here. And we'll do this with the three hero team this time. We'll bring along... Ra and T... Not, not termination. Uh, that'll, that'll, that'll be for next time. We're gonna bring. Let's see here. Regular variant scholar for this time. The adamant sentinels. And let's go ahead and bring along. We'll go with Unity, the regular variant, because I didn't actually bring it yet. We'll randomize the environment. We'll go back to the Temple of Zhulong. Because I don't think we want to... I don't think the people here exactly want Baron Blade blowing up their temple. I know Iron Legacy tried to prevent these people from entering the temple, but Baron Blade is just going to flat out blow them up. So let's actually prevent them from blowing up the temple. If you're listening to this Hero of Light, I know you don't like people entering the temple, but we absolutely need to make sure it's not blown up by Baron Blade. So we'll go Mad Bomber, Baron Blade against Ra. Actually, no, we'll um, we'll do the uh, we'll do uh, we'll bring five. We'll actually bring along America's newest legacy into this one. So we'll go Mad Bomber, Blade against America's newest legacy, Ra, Scholar. Adamant Sentinels and Unity at the Temple of Zhulong. Let's fight. And yes, there's still Nemesis here. You think you're so, so clever. Your father knew to fear me. You shall learn. You're crazier than you are dangerous. And you're really dangerous. Oh yes, um, Pauline. She is crazy. He doesn't have any. Luckily, here he doesn't have any setups, and all. And you never have to deal with any of the any targets here because instead instead of doing the um, regular setup as possible, whenever a villain target enters play, it's placed on the discard, and the top card of the villain deck is played. Cards under this card have no game tags and are indestructible and not considered in play. At the start of the villain turn, Baron Blade deals each non-villain target X fire damage where X is the number of cards under the card. When Baron Blade would be destroyed, his villain character card flips to the maniacal death raid wheel their side instead. So just like with the regular uh, Baron Blade, once, he's once he goes to zero, he flips over. So he's going to start off by hitting Legacy for one because he thinks it's a cheap shot. Slash and burn. He's going to hit the Idealist and Ra. So yes, he's absolutely crazy. So it's it's going to be a big damage raise. So we'll fuck him. Now, Surge of Strength for America's Lewis Legacy is the best uh, card for her, but just because of the fact that she'll just start. She has a fancy to just deal flat-out damage. So he already took out almost a third of his hit points already. 
Ra is going to go ahead and play the Staff. Yeah, the Staff of Ra because he's not going to deal any fire damage immediately right now. But we're going to hit him for three because we need to deal as much damage as possible. Now here's the regular variant of Scholar. Instead of being able to hit himself for damage like with, uh, with flesh to iron, he's instead going to be able to re uh, regain hit points instead. Let's not dismiss anything to start with because he doesn't have anything. Legacy is going to put a top card of a deck into play. Inspiring Presence. This is going to increase. This is going to increase all hit points by one, and everybody's damage is increased by one. Rod's going to free Solar Flare. Scholar's going to going to draw two cards off of that. You can't regain any more HP. Sentinels are going to play Dark Delusions, which is going to hit Baron Blade for seven. Unity is going to put a B bot into play, and since. Using the power is pointless, we're just going to draw a card. Grace under fire is not going to help here. Now here, the first thing I want to do is the dirt steel change because this is since May stay here, instead of his block, he's going to deal one target, two melee damage, and the next damage dealt to that target is irreducible. I'll hit Baron Blade for four. Wow, we got all kinds of stuff going on. So, I'm going to put this construction pile on. Unity happens to have put golems out into play. And her ability is to destroy an equipment card. And if you do, you put a mechanical golem into play from your hand. These mechanical golems cannot be played from directly from the hand for, during the play phase. So, and this construction pile on is going to put two mechanical golems in play and then destroy this card. A platform bot and a, b and a champion bot. This resembles pretty much uh, legacy. <laughs> wow, Baron Blade's already at three. And the Apprentice Poisoner is going to hit B bot. Wow, this is like I can't believe we flipped Baron Blade in one t in one round. So, I can't believe this actually happened. Our Prince Poison is going to be destroyed and everybody will take one damage except for the, except for, um, yeah, Mainstay. He's going to zap her. And since we have plenty of health, well, I think we're just going to take some, some damage. This will incapacitate the other stuff, but we're not going to surrender. But he's, I think he's really mad though. We'll go surge of strength and we'll start, we'll start zapping him. Since he really made everybody angry. Ra's going to go fire blast and deal 9 damage to Baron Blade. And he's going to deal another 6 damage to Baron Blade. And we'll go ahead and keep this out for now. Keep moving. Salt to liquid. Mortal form to energy. Grace under fire. We'll hit him for two. We're going to heal for two. And we're going to zap him for three. True seeker. Well, now we'll go team communication. We're going to yell Dark Delusions to hit him for three. We'll hit Baron Blade for another six. Robot Reclamation. We'll put bot some plots out there. We're going to blow up the Staff of Ra, and we're going to put this uh, platform bot into play. Draw the champion bot. Zap Baron Blade for, for that. And he's going to go down by the Shinobi Assassin. So this really did not last long at all, which I think is a, is a new record. I want to see if Habilar or Games actually take a look at this because I really think this is going to be absolutely hilarious. 
because I've never ever defeated this villain in w any villain in particular, with the exception of maybe uh, Wager Master in this short amount of time, especially against Bad Bomber Blade. And this is pretty much done for. He's pretty much thunderstruck by this case, and. For all the fun here at Sentinels of the Multiverse, and the, probably the fastest win ever in, against Mad Bomber Blade in Sentinels of the Multiverse history, I'm Crimson Thunder. See you next time, everybody.